<laughs> hey, this is Blake with Texas Bee Supply, and we wanted to show you guys how to transfer your new nook into a hive. That's a common question we get a lot. Uh, people are always wondering, once I get my new nook home, what do I do with it? How do I get it into my hive? When do I put it in? And so we wanna walk you through the steps of uh, what to do when you get it home, how to get it into your new hive, and what to do once your uh, new hive comes home. Um, and once you get it into your hive, what to do next. So um, your nook probably looks a lot like this. We have a variety of colors. You probably notice the spray paint on the lid and that we actually do that on purpose. Um, when we build these nooks, we bring them out into a bee yard and uh, we put two frames of brood and two frames of honey and a feeder inside each nook box. And then we put a queen cell. So a queen that hasn't hatched yet and she hatches out of her cell and she has to go on her mating flight. And when we have uh, a field full of two or three hundred of these nooks, it can be hard for that queen to find her way back from her mating flight to her exact nook where she belongs. So we actually put a, a unique design on every single lid so that the queen, when she comes back, can find her unique box. So that, that's why that's there in case you're wondering. But um, when you get it home, uh, one of the things we get asked a lot is, do you, do you transfer it into your hive that night or do you wait until the next morning? You can do either. Um, it's preferable to go ahead and get it into the hive, but if you're getting home and it's late and you're tired or you're unsure um, because it's the middle of the night, how to, you, know, you may not want to mess up at night, it's fine to, uh, to wait until the next morning. If you're gonna wait till the next morning, then you're going to want to get it out of your car, um, take a sheet or a covering you have off of it, and you want to bring it out, and I recommend just putting it directly on top of your hive that you've got ready for it or next to it. And one of the key things you want to do is you want to open the entrance. So on these nooks, it's really simple to open the entrance. All you do is on either end, you just lift straight up you'll hear a little click and that opens the entrance. That way, if something happens and uh, you know you don't get out to transfer it until late in the day the next day, the bees can still come and go and cool themselves off. And um, So if you don't do it that night, just make sure you pop that entrance open and you can come back and do it the next morning. So the next morning or that night, when you get ready to do the transfer, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, you're just gonna set it on the ground next to your hive. And this is the hive that you hopefully prepared to do the transfer. A couple things to notice is you probably have an entrance reducer. Don't put it on. So it's late enough in the year. You know, we do pickups in April and May. It's late enough in the year you really don't need this. So just store it, set it aside. You don't need it until this coming fall. The hive itself, you got your lid, you got your inner cover. You're going to take both of those off set them aside and you've got nine or ten frames inside your hive you're going to want to take out there's there's five frames inside this nook that come with it so five of these frames you're going to take out and remove in preparation for the nook now to give yourself a little extra room as you're putting it in i would go ahead and take out two more frames set those aside but we're going to put these back in when we're done so now we've got plenty of room and we're ready to do the transfer so make sure you've got your smoker make sure your smoker is working well and that it is lit and popping well and you're going to gently pop the lid open on the nook and you might see some bees hanging around on the lid um, for now you can just gently set that aside you're going to give them a little puff of smoke doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. And a couple things you'll notice right away, the bees might be a little bit upset. I mean, you just you just picked them up from their home, put them in a car, brought them to a new place, and they might be flying around a little bit, um, but that's okay, you know, that's to be expected. And in fact, it's perfectly normal for up to a week or so after you get them home, for the bees just to be a little crankier than normal as they adjust to their new home. One thing you're going to notice is that uh, you've got some burr comb here. So this is extra comb that the bees added to the top bars of the frames. That's perfectly normal. Uh, bees use that to bridge to an, the next box. 
or to stick the lids down to the tops of the frames. You can uh, remove that if you want to, but uh, in general, I usually leave it unless it's in my way or excessive because the bees are typically gonna just build it right back if you do remove it. So that's perfectly normal. You'll also notice frames of different ages. So this is an older frame, it's darker. You've got some newer, nicer frames. Um, in your nook, there might be some plastic frames. The reason for the variety of frames is because we take existing beehives and we pull frames of bees and brood out of those existing beehives put them in a nook box and give them a new queen to create a nook. And so these original frames um, are from older beehives that are you know a year or two old. And that's why you have some frames of different ages. So go ahead and give them a little bit more smoke. Not a lot. You can see it just takes a little bit to get them to run down. And then you're gonna start with the outside frame. Now the outside frame in a nook is typically going to be honey. So you're just going to give yourself a little bit of space with your hive tool and then you're going to gently pull the frame straight up. Now a mistake a lot of people make is they really they try to pull it up at an angle like this or like this and that rolls the bees. So what you want to do is you want to pull the frame straight up so that you don't roll any bees or touch the sides. So you've got a great frame of honey here. The queen is starting to lay eggs in it. So you're going to take that and you're going to transfer it into the hive in the exact same order that it was in in the nook box. And you just keep going one frame at a time, crack them apart, give yourself a little bit of space, pull the frame straight up, straight in, there's a frame of brood, straight into the hive. Most hives will have, most nooks will have two to three frames of brood and a couple frames of honey. Again, straight up, straight into the hive. Do this one at a time. So all your frames are transferred over. Don't worry about looking at the queen at this point, looking for the queen. Uh, your goal is just to get these frames in the nook. It's traumatic enough for the bees as it is, so you really don't want to spend a lot of time looking for the queen. We'll go back in a few days and look for that queen. So you've got them all in. One thing you always want to do in beehives is you want to keep the frames pushed tightly together. So make sure those frames are all nice and snug, pushed together, and push them all to one side. And you're ready to add these extra frames you took out to give yourself some space. So we put those back in. Now I like to just leave nine frames in this bottom box. Um, that gives me a little bit more working room. If you put 10, if you put this 10th frame in, they're all very tight and you can, you can kind of crush more bees as you try to pull the frames out. So in the bottom box, I usually recommend just leaving 10. I mean, I'm sorry, leaving nine and giving yourself an equal amount of space on both sides. And that way, next time you go look at your hives, you can scoot these frames over to give yourself more space to pull out a frame and look at it. So you can see the bees are doing really well. They're not terribly upset. They're just hanging out in their new home. Um, you're going to have some extra bees left on your lid and in your nook box. So what you're going to do is give these, give these bees a little bit more smoke. And this is the scary part, but it needs to be done. Is you just gently turn the lid over and give it a little bit of a bang on the top all the bees off of it. You're going to do the same with the nook box. Any bees that are left inside, just give it a little bit of a hit like that. And these, these frame rests will probably fall out, but that's okay. The reason you do that is uh, you're probably going to have, uh, it's possible that you can have the queen bee on that lid or in that nook box, so you don't want to just bang them out on the ground. to be in the new home. 
So what we're going to do now is we're, we're basically done. You've, you've completed the transfer. Um, you want to feed your bees. So you want to, whatever style of feeder you chose, um, you want to make sure that's in place when you install your bees. And we've got a different video you can go take a look at on how to choose the style of feeder that works best for you. But whatever feeder you're using, make sure it's in the hive and you fill it up with syrup before you leave your hive at this point. So once your feeder's full, you're ready to put the lids on. So you put your inner cover on, put your outer cover on, and you're done. Um, a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, a lot of folks ask, you know, when do I come back and check my bees now that they're installed in the hive? Give them some time. Um, you know, it takes them a little bit to adjust to a new location. I usually recommend giving them five to seven days before going back and looking at them. Uh, make sure you keep feeding them despite not going back and looking at them. You don't, don't go through frame by frame and look at them for five to seven days, but certainly keep those feeders full of syrup um, for the foreseeable future. Once you do go back in and look, um, you don't have to spend a lot of time looking. The biggest thing you're looking for is eggs or larvae. Um, that's hard to see if you're a new beekeeper, but the best thing to do is hold the frame up so the sunlight shines directly into a cell so that you can see those eggs or larvae. And that'll just verify that the queen successfully made the trip and she wasn't killed in transit or killed as you were transferring the milk into the hive. And that's the biggest thing you're looking for, um, just making sure she's in place. You don't have to find her, um, you can try, um, but it can be pretty tough to find a queen if you're new to beekeeping. But uh, at least make sure you find eggs and larvae, um, or especially the you know, larvae if you can't see the eggs, and that'll help verify that the queen is in place. If you have any questions during that time, feel free to reach out to us, and you can, the best thing to do is to send us a picture of your hive and the frames inside the hive. If you have a question, if you see something you don't recognize, send us a picture of it, and we'd be happy to take a look. Um, as far as uh, adding a second box, most nooks are gonna take anywhere from um, two to three weeks at least before they're ready for a second box. And we've got another video you can go take a look at on how to know it's time to add a second box. The last thing to mention uh, is just mites. And a lot of folks ask, do we need to treat for mites when we get our bees home? Uh, have they been treated for mites? When you get nooks from us, uh, we have taken care of the mites. And so when, when you've gotten them, we make sure that the mite levels are uh, zero to one percent uh, range. And so you don't have to worry about mites this spring. You absolutely need to be thinking about mite control for this summer and fall. Uh, but, but for this spring, it's, it's been taken care of. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, take a look at the other videos, and we hope you had a successful transfer of your note. Thanks.